Kevin, where's Kevin? Where's Kevin? I can't see you, brother. Stand up, stand up. Just in case, ladies and gentlemen, if you get a message impending some charges for a massage you don't remember, send it to that guy. Uh, I did not expect I'd be getting a massage. I want to live in Sydney now. Okay, see, these things, right? I'm looking for, news hasn't reached China yet to start making stuff because guys like me are on stage. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I really am. I really am. As a matter of fact. Nowadays, you got to be careful because you say something and people just growl at you. I know what's up with that. I don't. I don't. Um, Right, let's make this quick. Next time, send me uh, an email regarding the dress code. Because everyone got, if you look to your left, right? There's these little dotted t-shirts. I look like I took all of them. <laughs> Once again, Kevin, we're going to talk right after this, brother. We're just, just going to iron this out. All right, real quick. <clears throat> gonna need, I'm going to need you to um, Im- use your imagination. I think the reason why me and my family and eight siblings have made it to Australia is because my mom was persistent enough, even though she had, she had no formal education, to, to, to imagine uh, the future of her eight children. So real quick. This is a, okay. You know the map of the world, right? You know what it looks like, don't you? Map? The world map? All oh, right. This feels like being in coffee. The United States is right here, right? Yeah. Africa's right here, right? Yeah. Africa's right where? Yeah. Right there, thank you. <laughs> uh, Australia's right here, right? Yeah. You said Australia's right here, right? Yeah. Okay. And Asia's right here, right? Yeah. Asia's where? Yeah. yeah. I don't know, everybody should have got a menu. But that was uh, yeah. some instruction on what was going to be happening. So this is the matter of what I need you to imagine that. The reason why I need you to do it is because I can't. Of the world is here. I came from Sudan, close to Australia. It's nuts, man. I went to Hungry Jack's. You got free drinks. <laughs> okay, okay, the, you didn't get it. I went to Hungry Jack's. You get refills. <laughs> you know, do you know what that does to you when all you've eaten is bread and water, rice and leftovers? See, I've got to live with the burden of gratitude now. Someone who's come from there to here. But that's, that's how small the world really is. But we keep classifying people, right? We keep classifying people and forgetting that they are individuals. So for instance, when someone makes it to this country on a boat, we still judge them based on their people. Which basically means we don't want to take responsibility for humanity, even though we're a part of it. Right. So you know where the map of the world is, right? I need some serious audience participation because this, <laughs> this is wearing me out. Is it, yep, yep. The other person was like, yep. <laughs> Focus right here, right here, map of the world. Yeah. Oh, much better. Woo. Now I can just get off. I'm going to do this poem. I'm going to do this poem, and I really just need you to imagine it. Don't even look at me. I'm not that handsome. My mama thinks so anyway. <laughs> I'm going to really just want you to imagine every word that comes out. Don't think too much about it. One of other issues we have is that we think too much. We try to rationalize everything, forgetting how to feel. I think once we allow that process, life becomes a bit easier. Because the matters of the mind overwhelm the heart, but the matters of the heart ease your mind. 
Okay? <clears throat> you imagine it? You're still looking at me. Nothing changed. All right. If the world were to focus its efforts on building a marching band, we wouldn't need armies or the military presence because the people would be busy manufacturing instruments instead of guns and ammunitions. There would be joy because our task would be tuning instruments and plotting sing-alongs when we are called to intervene, putting many minds to rest assured the defense forces are not for the purpose of another warfare but a jamboree. You see, the marching band showing the children a world without borders would leave from New Orleans Jazz Festival to Tel Aviv, visiting the Gaza Strip, joining forces and singing along with the revolutionary voices, extending for a handshake in spite of our indifferences, real as they might seem. And while we in the Middle East, we'll clean up the mess from Baghdad, calling over the children from Kabul for a game of soccer, although as far as I remember, we used to call it football. <laughs> but who has time for such petty arguments? Before we know it, the marching band would be on the way to Africa, drumming and singing, and I'm sure you know the words. Akuna Matata means no worry. You're not going to sing? Fine. <laughs> Continuing the march, the marching... Okay, the joy of having watched The Lion King. Influence. Continuing the march, the marching band would gather in Asia for tea, listening to the didgeridoo. Hear Dreamtime stories in Alice Springs, march to Europe for the Glastonbury Festival, skiing in Vancouver, South America for the Carnival, and learning to samba. But maybe it's just my imagination. My fellow citizens, what would you rather? Our presidents and prime ministers constantly investing in unnecessary weapons capable of eradicating our future in a matter of seconds? Because there is an alternative to just talking about wanting peace. If this world were to focus its efforts on building a marching band, the people would be busy manufacturing instruments instead of guns and ammunition. I had this, I'm not sure who's familiar with Victoria, but we, we better than Sydney. That's just my thought, my opinion. Don't hold me against it. My family lived in um, Lilydale. It's a small countryside in Victoria. Where people are country folks, you know, they have manners. They, they let you know if a spoon is a spoon and a fork is a fork. So this lady jumped off the bus one afternoon and reminded me of something I nearly forgot. Broad daylight, we had a train station. She jumped over, she said, oh my God, a black person, I've never seen one before. I love your skin. I only see black people on TV. I'm standing there like. <laughs> okay. Everyone at the bus stop was like. <gasps> She's called him black. But you see, in that instant, I, I had to memorize something. It isn't so much so the fact that people are racist. It's just that we've forgotten that curiosity is what it's all about. I mean, I couldn't just dismiss her as someone who's racist when her authenticity and her enthusiasm of wanting to approach and start a conversation with me was really frank. How many of you said that to anybody? Okay, never mind. Let's not go into that. And then I was at a shopping center. You know Woolworth, the chocolate part? Chocolate? Okay. <laughs> they have a bunch of chocolate. And this lady was pushing her trolley. Pushing her what? Audience participation. Pushing her what? Sorry. All right. Her kid was on it. You remember Titanic? Yeah. Well, Leonardo da Vinci was... <laughs> so this kid is right there, and mom is pushing the trolley. And I come, right? It's almost like it's a character out of a movie. I turn. I, I'm, I'm up for a sneakers bar. The kid looks at me and goes, Mommy, a black guy. The whole shopping center is just... Shh. <laughs> and her mom was like... Honey, don't say that, it's rude. I'm thinking, dude, I've got an endless supply of chocolate. I've been licking on this all day. See? But here's another thing. That child had, had one thing in common with this lady that I met at the bus stop. He was curious. I can't just dismiss that and, and classify that as racist. See, if we can't laugh at ourselves, who the hell are we supposed to be laughing at? I didn't know you guys would be so enthusiastic. I've 
<laughs> just, I don't write jokes. I'm, I'm a poet. We're boring. I don't know where all this is coming from. But I appreciate all the love. I'm just going to close out on a real brief um, poem. Understand, my, my family, I'm one of eight. My dad died before we made it here, and he was so, um, it was so, he just emphasized that, that we had to leave because what's, what's, what's there to do when all of the children that were left back there would either become child soldiers or you died. And most of the children end up burying their parents. Um, and I, me ending up being here is one of those things where I still wake up and just go, what? This is unreal. Now I'm battling with gratitude because, see, my dilemma is I have to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land and yet be, 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 be grateful for the Australians that were confident enough to allow us a second chance as citizens in this world. But at the same time, it's how do we move forward as people. Every single day we get a chance to reinvent ourselves. So this poem is my constant guilt, um, the one that I have to go through in a way. <clears throat> Where do you find forgiveness when no one will easily forgive you because of the simple fact you're human? I found that I've had to forgive myself for the hurt that I've caused others and forgive them for the hurt that they've caused me. And more than once I've had to convince other people that what they've done to me pales in comparison to what I inflict on myself because guilt is a trap, especially when we are at the mercy of those we've wronged and when they refuse to forgive us. See, there is more to life than just saying, you're sorry. You can mean it by really manifesting it. See, we keep forgetting that more than once, when other people do wrong to us, we become the judges. But when they do something that is worth of praise, we forget it. You see, politics failed, religion divided us. There only remains one way to figure it out. And if you haven't yet, the emphasis is that you need to find a way or make a way to make it happen. Yes, life is simple. And it's how complicated we've made it that we've become entangled and somehow forgot how to breathe. Life is a rhythm, and if you've forgotten how to follow the tune, you're supposed to breathe in, breathe out. As soon as you do that, you will find the rhythm of life, and as soon as you become aware, you realize everything came to be created under control and calmness. We are all searching for something, but only art can save us. It takes courage to be kind. So how brave are you?